gentlemen, your mother. Welcome to this episode 79 of the Copy of Eleven show brought to you by wigwam.ie SME peer support. Delighted that you're here. Thanks for joining us. Delighted in particular that my uh, special guest this morning is Mr. James Sexton. James, you're very welcome. Would you please say hello and show us your coffee mug? Saw your lovely coffee mug earlier. Hi, Colin. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a fine coffee mug. <laughs> so hello and, and thanks for having me. And I'm looking forward to it. So, and likewise, my guys, indeed, it's, it's, it, it, James, it's our pleasure. Thank you for taking the time out, busy man that you are, to come and meet us. So lovely to have you here. Let me just tell you a little bit about James before uh, we bring the man in himself for the backstory. So James is the man behind uh, Ireland's fittest family TV format, which is, is, is beginning to show global roots. Delighted with that, James. Uh, he's owner of Haya Event Management, and he's been a professional entertainer all his life, having started out as a mobile DJ. James has emceed events from an early age and still does regular TV audience show warm-ups, including Ireland's Got Talent. And in terms of the entertainment industry, James says he's been there, done that, and has several T-shirts. Uh, perhaps the most, uh, 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 interestingly, the most uh, accomplished, sorry, perhaps most interestingly, uh, he is known as the founder of the TV format, uh, Ireland's fittest family and uh, he's to date best known for that but he's got another one on the boil and he might talk to us about that in a little while and as if that isn't enough James Sexton is a member of the International Academy of Television and Science better known as the Emmys James Sexton, that, none of that happened by accident you're very welcome, lovely to have you here <laughs> tell, us, tell us the back story James I, I always say to my guests at this point in the show we can Google your work we can Google your professional life what we'd like to find out before you bring us to that point is if you go all the way back to little James Sexton. Where did you grow yeah. up, how, etc.? Well, I'm from Shannon originally, um, married in Shannon to Francis, three grown up children at this stage. So myself and Francis were both from Shannon. We, we were actually one of the first couples to be christened, confirmed, communion confirmation and be married in Shannon, if not the first. So two Shannon people. So we're both Shannon, born in Limerick, and um, shipped out to Shannon then, and, and so here since. So um, grew up in Shannon, Finian Park, lived in three different areas in Shannon, and still living in Valley Casey in Shannon. So I love it, love Shannon, love the people there. I, I just love the town. I would move nowhere else at this stage. I'm happy there. My business is I'm in Smithstown here in Shannon. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute, but. Um, but basically, you know, I have a small family, one sister in the UK. And when I, when I went to school in Shannon, I probably would have been the last person that people would have picked in the class to say that guy's going to go into entertainment. I would have been a nervous enough young fellow when I, when I was younger, but pr pretty nervous and one of the, the quieter fellows in the class. And it always, actually, when I look back, it often amazes me how I ended up in entertainment, but basically um, I was at a disco one night with a friend of mine, never really liked going to discos, and um, but ended up at this, this school disco one night, sitting at the back with a mate of mine, and I'm looking at the DJ and I'm going, could we do that? So we went away, myself and himself, Joe Fitz is a name, myself and Joe, went away, bought equipment, and off we went on the road of mobile DJ work. So that's where it all started, and we were probably two of the, 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 the most nervous DJs ever went out on the road. It was just bizarre that I ended up doing that. So then I got a job in De Beers, worked in De Beers, DJing part-time, and in De Beers I, I kind of did a bit of machine operating, ended up a chauffeur and driving their um, corporate guests and customers for nine or ten years. So lucky to have that job. It was just the best job ever. Great boss, John Toomey, in there. Just an amazing job and one day I'm at the airport and I'm holding my sign collecting we'll say column and I remember looking down the line of other drivers and they were all I was probably 30 now I was DJing booking bands doing events part-time I remember looking down the line and all the drivers collecting people were all in their 50s 60s and I was the young driver, and I kind of went, is this, is this it? Is this my lot? I'm going to be driving. I'm happy. Best job ever. Driving an S-Class Merc. Very well looked after by the beers. Pension, all the perks. And I looked down that line, 
and I went straight back with the, the customer I was driving. I walked straight into HR and I said, I'm, I'm leaving. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm impulsive. I decide on something and I go for it and I commit to it. So I left and now at the time there was a, a redundancy package that was kind of there, thereabouts, if, you, if they, you know, if, if you suited it, if, if it suited them. So they offered them to keep me on a contract um, part time to drive certain customers. And I said, no, I'm going to go for this. So my dad worked there, God rest him. And, and I, I remember coming home telling my dad and he went, oh gosh, but he was positive. And my mum was positive, go for it. And so I went full time into entertainment. Wow, wow. Yeah. Well, that's some plot of history. Listen, just let me pause you there for a second. A couple of things. The first thing that really surprised me, genuinely surprised me, was you weren't the class entertainer. No. I naturally assumed that that was where it all started, but in no. fact... Far you? from it. I would say anyone in my class would have been surprised when they heard James Sexton was going to entertainment. Incredible, incredible. Yeah, yeah. no, I would have been probably the, the, the bottom 10% of the most nervous people in the class so wow. i always i always look back at that and i suppose i give myself a little pat on the back and go Whoo, you've done a lot from from that nervous little skinny young fella i'm still kind of skinny you know so um i, I you know i often look back at that and go wow I've, I've i've been very lucky my gosh i've been so lucky to do what i've done in this business where this has taken me around the world doing the most amazing events. I'll tell you a very quick story. I remember one time my van broke down in Cavan. We were doing a murder mystery up in that haunted castle in Cavan, Cabra Castle. And um, my van broke down. It, I had to get it towed down in the back of a tow truck. And we were coming down anyway the next day. It was actually two days later. And I remember the, the, the tow truck driver saying to me, and you're very lucky to be working in your business. You're in warm venues, dealing with nice people. And he says, here am I bellied under a truck. He says, morning, noon and night. And I said, do you know something? You are spot on there. And I am. And I work with great people. And so I'm very lucky. Yes, I'd, I'd go along with that. I'd go along with that. There's the Bula bus has already started. I'd go along with that. <laughs> however, however, James, you've got to take some responsibility for it in a positive way. We create our own look. Let's go back to the De Beers days, right? So you go in there as a young fella to get a job, you're DJing and whatnot at night, and you go in there as a young fella, and they, they, they entrusted their clients to you to drive them. That's, that's a big deal. That's a big deal, right? And it clearly shows the measure of who you are. You're a people person. You're inoffensive. You know, you get on with anybody, you'll find a, a conversation point, and you'll make it work. And that's why, that's why when you were leaving, they offered you a contract to stay. So, you know, all of that ties into you getting the breaks that you've gotten over the years. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. So, so what was the first gig after the beers? What was the first, um, the, the first big break, if you like? You... Yeah, well, I remember I rented an office here in Shannon and um, I sat in that office. I did not know how to turn on a computer and I genuinely mean that. I, we bought a computer and set it up in the office. And a good friend of mine, Derek Barrett, down in Peach Recruitment, Derek came in, set up the computer and he said, then you just go on here and you log on and, you, and, and you're grand now, off you go. And I said, Derek, whoa, whoa, hold on a minute. No, I, I, I haven't a clue. I had never looked at a computer. It, it was almost alien to me. Anyway, nothing happened for a few weeks. I built my website. We did, you know, I, I invested in some equipment and I was kind of by myself, really. Got it all up and running, you know, in a very small scale. The very first call I got was from a bank in Belgium called Euroclear. They rang me looking for an event in Dublin for 50 people with a, a pretty ridiculous budget, as in in a, in, a, in a good way. And I went, whoa, this can't be real. I thought it was a bit of a joke from one of the lads I worked with in the beers. Uh, hold on a minute, now this can't be for real. It was. And would you believe it? Since that day, every single year, that's, that's 22 years ago, I have done that event. And it, it was meant to be on last week. And it was cancelled due to COVID. So I held that event and I have built up a great relationship with the, these people. They come in every year from Belgium. I booked their venue. I booked their entertainment. We've, we've used all the venues in Dublin from the Shelburne, the Royal College of Surgeons. So it's, it, this would have been, the, I think, the 23rd year of that event. It's always in May and it's always a Thursday. 
And so it was a shame it was cancelled. So I'm the, as, as all events are at the moment. But that's the first event I got, and I still have that event. So I'm but again, you know, again, James, mm. that's back to the measure of the man. That yeah. didn't happen. That, that's not luck. That's hard work. Yeah. Um, and, and a genuine attention to detail and a genuine you wanting to serve your client. And you clearly do that in spades. Happy days. Yeah. Great yeah. stuff. Oh, and I'm, I have a lot of good clients like that that keep coming back. So I haven't loads of clients on high events, but we've really, really good, um, loyal clients. And so do you mind me asking them, um, and th thank you for that. that, that gives us a lovely picture, those early years, right? Love that, that yourself and your good lady wife were the first to be uh, christened, got your communion, yeah. uh, confirmed and married all in Shannon. I think we were the first. If there's somebody out there, let us know. <laughs> but I think we were the first. <laughs> Is there a spot prize? Is there a spot yeah. prize? Somebody can beat that. <laughs> so, um, so come here. So you, we, we've got that lovely picture of, uh, of those early years and a uh, big brave move leaving the beers, but it's clearly play, paid off in spades and we're delighted for you. Um, roll on. So you started in, in events, right, with that, that, that Belgian bank. And uh, how did the journey meander from there? Because clearly the TV work didn't come in at the, the very start, I assume. No. Now, mind you, the, the journey from there was difficult, the early years. I mean, I was, that sounds great, doing the fancy bank event up in Dublin in the Shelburne. That sounds all fantastic. But I was still DJing in every hall, and, and, and I still DJ, you know. I, so I've been all around the country, and, and you know, I, I've been to New York. I've DJed at a wedding in New York, a couple in Poland, in Melbourne. I, I've done a lot. I've been a lot of places gigging we'll say and I still do but the events started getting busier the corporate is where the market is you know if you want to build a business so it started doing more gaining more corporate clients and but during this time every event I do every single event and it's probably a little bit of a problem in many ways every event is bespoke almost if you if you rang us for a casino night and you want it for your your 30th birthday party column, let's say. Um, we can put a casino night together for you, but that same casino might be very different for somebody else because they mightn't have as many people. It might be different venue. So every event is different. So the problem there lies that every event needs a really seriously detailed quote. So it can be, you know, it's not like selling a product. Every product is different. So it's difficult to to get the business going. So I employed somebody in a way we went getting our quotes out and this, that and the other. But it was difficult to get the trust of companies, you know, because there was other big event companies. But I got a few on board and away we went. But my point is on the creativeness. I'm always creating. So every event has to be created different. Every product I have, most of the products I have are unique to me. I design them. I get them out there. And it's something that I have done every you will never see, again, we'll go back to Casino Night, like the ones I do. They're completely different from the ones anybody else does because I just like being a bit different with things. So I've been pitching TV stuff. I've been pitching TV formats for 20 years. People don't realize it, but I've been knocking on that door a long time. I've been extremely close so many times. I mean extremely close. I remember one time, I, I, I won't mention who they are, I had a, a deal as good as signed with a big TV company for format. And I walked out of the shower one night to a missed call. And that's how I was singing in the shower, delighted with this because this was progressing. Missed call, bang, it's not happening. And I, it was just bang. But, you know, I, I just straight away deleted. Gone, it's not happening, move on. So I've been knocking, knocking, knocking. So... I mean, the likes of Fitz's family, it's been, it's hard to believe it's eight years since Mr. and David Fitz went to RTE pitching it. It's hard to believe that, you know, and, um, and David was a great help, you know, with it too. And I mean, his, his energy and all brings a lot to the show. But when that was pitched to RTE, we didn't think eight years later that this series would be one of the most watched series on, on TV. And it's now in seven countries. Now, in an ideal world, yeah, it's great. But in an ideal world, it would be great if it ran in seven countries every year. But some countries are ran in it. They didn't take it again. The figures didn't do, do whatever, do it justice. So they didn't decide to go again. Other countries, they did. But the big one is um, Sweden. Sweden at the moment have just signed. And 
if Sweden, it seems it looks great, they're filming at the moment. If Sweden is a big success, it, Sweden is well recognized in rural television, it could really catch on with Norway, Denmark. We'd love to get it in the UK and in the States. We have a great agent who's trying. Hasn't happened very close a couple of times, very close recently in the UK. But the fact it's an outdoor show now, the format could gain a bit of traction, you know, with everything going on with COVID. So, so that's that. And that's, you know, and, and I had a few other ones as well that, that are there or thereabouts. And we'll touch on that in just a second, if you don't mind. Uh, you know, I did open the show by saying probably best known for, in fact, you, you yourself might not be known for it uh, because you're just the creator in the background. The show is what's known. Yes. It's been a huge success, which is wonderful. Um, but what I love to hear you say was you've been pitching shows for 20 years. Yeah. Classic case of your man's an overnight success. It only took him 20 years to get there. Yeah. <laughs> classic case of that. Yeah. And I, I think that's really important for people to hear because people do think these things happen just like magic. And wasn't sure. your man very lucky? We're back to James Sexton made his own look. I remember meeting you in the Savoy Hotel some years back, James, you had a cup of coffee together in, in the real world. And yeah. uh, you were sharing with me, you know, when you're on a long flight somewhere, you get the notebook out and you start scribbling and figuring out formats. And that's your, just the that's right. Yeah, great stuff. Great stuff. Yeah. yeah, I love that. That's what I do. I mean, that's what I've been doing during COVID a lot too. I was on a call last night to a mate of mine in the States who develops game shows with another friend of ours in Cork. So the three of us are working on a good game show and it's looking really good. And, you know, I, I, I just, I love, it's getting the right idea. It's tricky to get that right idea. But what, what fit his family, and I had another show called Fair Days, which won a competition called Celtic Formats. It's a dating format. And that won that about three years ago. It was open to Ireland and the UK. They were looking for a format in the native language. So I entered this dating format. It won the competition, got funding to make a pilot. It's made, it's really good. It's kind of speed dating in taxis, very funny show. And, but that, that was meant to run in three countries and for funding reasons, it never happened. So again, just when you think, you know, this looks really good. This is gonna run in Wales, Scotland and Ireland in the native language and everything looked good and then there was some issues with um, with financing it, and it just never happened. Now it could still happen, but it's another format that I own, and it's there, and it's made. So you know, and then I've the other one I, I was talking to you about with ITV. That's I pitched a format to them. The great thing with Fitness Family, it opened doors. They now know, you know, this fella has history, and then they see my previous history. Oh, he's not actually a fly by night. He's been around a long time. So. So I pitched a new one then to ITV. I can't say too much about it, but um, but they signed a three-year deal on it. So we're waiting to see. COVID is after, obviously, you know, stopping that. It looked like it may go to series this year. It's a kind of a show targeted at the Love Island audience. You know, it's that that target audience, um, and it's it's really really strong, and they loved it. They. I pitched three or four shows. I went over to London. They, they were looking at two shows I was working on. Went over and they looked at the two of them and they said, have you anything else? And I said, I have this one. Bang. They had been looking at a, a similar style show. So I worked with ITV and um, I'd been over a few times with their creative team and they kind of took what they had, they took what I had and we merged them together into this and it just looks so good so they're very excited over it um it just it's on a hold at the moment but you know maybe next year, it'll maybe next year. and if it comes back it could be i mean to break it with itv would be would be just massive you know fantastic i i'm clear i'm 100 percent sure it'll happen yeah uh, now or at a point in the future it has to and you're putting in all that effort and you're uh you're um you know putting in the hard yards something has to break through so. yeah I love, by the way, the fact that you you brought two shows to them, and they said, "Have you anything else?" Sounds yeah. like sounds like the X Factor, where you know Simon asks, "Have you another song in the bag?" Yes, I have, and that's the winner. And then the other part that you know that you brought out that show, and they said, well, "We're working on this other one, and we put them together." It's a bit yeah. like the boy bands that have been created. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was great. It just we we left that meeting. A lot of us, I must say, I went down the lift in in, in ITV, and I walked out the front of the building. I went, "Whoa, this is mad!" You know. This, I, you know, I've come a long way on this, you know, 
but it's because you know you are right i put in the graft i put in the hours and there's history now so it's just opening television doors as i work along now you know so you sound you sound very excited about it all james mm-hmm. which is lovely to see yeah no i am and it's um funny enough this time has given it as, as difficult a time and all as it is for people in the entertainment arts and hospitality it's just desperate i've got our friends that are just hanging on you know at the moment in business and it's shocking and it's so sad but the, the one thing that it's given me and a lot of people creative people is time to work on new things and i have a couple of other little projects there i'm working on that are starting to you know to, to, to flourish now so yeah i i, I was going to ask you about covid um just just before we go to COVID, do you mind me asking, uh, like when I rang you that time, I loved it, you said Haya, which yeah. is, uh, I think you chose the name Haya, did you, so you could answer the phone like that? Yeah, well, I'll tell you how I choose the name Haya. It was very simple. I had a girl working with me in the office here for about six or seven years, Valerie Healy. What an amazing girl, living in Cork now and still singing, and her husband, her husband Bob is a producer, produces films. They're just the most creative couple God ever created. They're brilliant. But Valerie worked with me here in the office for about six or seven years. And every morning, Valerie would come in, hiya, hiya, or anyone that come in, hiya, hiya, hiya. And I said, Valerie, that is just the best name. Someday I'm going to take that name and use it. So um, basically, I, I was kind of going under James Sector Entertainment. And I thought to myself one day, if I ever wanted to sell on the business, or if my son Adam or Shane or Lauren, the daughter, wanted to get involved, it's my name stuck to it. And that was, that, that's something I made a mistake with. I really think from day one, I should have branded from day one. I had a mistake, but I, if I was to do it again. So I said, I better create a brand for this. Valerie, hiya, that's what we'll do. So I developed hiya, and then I rang her and said, Valerie, it's after happening. So, oh, she's, she's a great character. So, yeah, so, and it's brilliant. I go to the toll, paying my toll, you know, and they see the van sometimes and yeah i i you know i'm outside the chicken hut in limerick one morning at half three in the morning and there's a group of drunken fellas singing hiya outside my van you know? it's amazing but people do remember it i love it and i answer the phone hiya we start our all our emails with hiya and i think it's a brand name that should be bigger than just james experience with so i often think god this is such a good name but I love it, and it's a happy brand, and it's what we do is nice and friendly. Oh, so, so yeah. Uh, well spotted. <laughs> does Valerie get the uh, the statutory ten percent? Does she? No, she she <laughs> won't see this video. <laughs> I love it, I love it. <laughs> oh, Valerie's a great friend the of mine. Story gets told every time. That's enough reward for it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. No, it's great stuff. Um, so, so in in terms of your business, then is Haya Events and James Sexton are you? sort of parallel training. Yeah, I, I, I kind of moved from James Sexton to Haya, so it's all Haya now. And the TV format stuff, is that under Haya? That's under Haya as well, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I have considered, I don't know, looking at TV production, but it's a difficult business and there's so many good people at it, it's it's tough. I, I'd nearly rather just be the, the, the writer, the creator and hand it over. It's like the Fittest Family. We've, Animo and Kite producing it, they're brilliant. You know, the, the team on it are brilliant. So it'd be very hard to compete with these people, you know, so just come up with the idea and, and pitch it out there. I, I have an idea for you, by the way. I've, okay. I've, I'm going to share it here in, um, with my friends. I have a bucket list thing, right? You, and by the way, you said earlier, if you were going to run my 30th birthday, I was thinking, does this guy have time machines as well? <laughs> right. Anyway, I was thinking, uh, but I have, I have a bucket list thing, right? And it's to win an Oscar. Right? Now, don't be laughing, Sarah Ward. Don't be laughing. Right? It's to win an Oscar. Now, I'm not going to win an Oscar for acting, but I have an idea as to how we could win an Oscar. It's a collaborative thing, right? No. It's Oscar Elga, and I'll fit... I'll fit <laughs> I'll look, look at James Finnegan with his Oscar there. Right, we'll bring you in later on that one, James. You've got to bring that in later. I have actually, outside my door here, I've got seven-foot Oscar statues. If you want, I can bring one in here and you can pretend you're at the Oscars. I genuinely, I'm looking out at them. Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, do you see where the universe conspires? This is all happening. Yeah, yeah. This thing for years. <laughs> but James, seriously, um, first of all, hats off to you for keeping keep on knocking. Uh, you know that, that's, yeah. that's a true. Hats off to you to, for being a genuinely nice guy that people want <laughs> to be. 
No, genuine. I'm not blowing smoke. Genuine. Right? Uh, you're so well held. Uh, I told Sean Lally you were coming on the the uh, on the, the show. Sean has the Woodstock Hotel Hotel. Yeah. Woodstock. Oh, great family. Sean was the GM in the Clarion and in the uh, Limerick Strand. The Strand. Yeah. yeah. He said he has never had better Christmas parties than the ones you ran for him through high events. So no, that's great. Thank you. Bus, yeah. uh, Sean and yeah. the inner fab. Yeah, yeah, they're great. Great, great people, great people. So look, you know, you've got all the ingredients um, uh, to, to make it happen and we're delighted, genuinely delighted that it's opening for you. And yeah. so excited. Clearly, you're not slowing down. You're just getting more excited. No, no, I've got to keep, keep chugging along. Now, there are days like everybody, I think, at the moment you wake up and you... I'm very lucky I have an office here in Shannon and I have a place to come and I have a little studio set up here next door. We're filming a, a little online kids series, trying to get a bit of traction on that. One thing in the world of television, it's hard to break it and it's a slow process, but that's understandable. So I'm looking now at online and creating myself. So that's what we're doing now. We're filming at the moment, a little online kids series. And just to see... Again, we have the time. I have a studio, so I have a few people working on that with me. So we're trying that. So, but there are mornings you do wake up like everybody, and you kind of go, "Gosh, you know." Especially if, if it's a dodgy old day with the rain and that, you have to push yourself. It's difficult for people. My gosh, it's difficult. It's the truth. Yeah. yeah. Last last two days now. The last two days have been just drizzly rain. Yeah. Uh, sort of miserable and my only there's always a worse story you know I mean yeah, yeah I think you always must look at there's always people way worse off we're very lucky very lucky we're very blessed we're very blessed mm -hmm. uh, which actually brings me to I wanted to ask you about COVID for you and COVID for your industry uh, what's it been like clearly difficult oh it's been shocking it really has I mean it's I've got I've got this morning I was on a call to two really good friends of mine and they're sound engineers and, you know, one of them would have a lot of money tied up in equipment and there's nothing. There, there's nothing. You know, he's got another brother who's involved in, in um, hospitality. He's nothing. It's, it's shocking. And, you know, I'm hearing different stories about people who are struggling to hang on to different companies and that it really is. It's, it's, it's in every, you know, walk of life, but, hospitality entertainment and events has been really hit badly you know and the worrying thing is it's kind of hard to see when it goes back speaking of the strand i mean i do the strand and, and, and dromoland's another place where i do their christmas run a christmas party nights for example locally and they're very successful and busy busy nights right now they both don't know what to do they're just two examples you know you know maria in the strand maria Raymond, they, they, they don't know what to do they, and nobody does so, but I do believe, and, and I mean, it, 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 not everybody can say this, I would rather not be working this Christmas and get through this. And now some people would say, it might be easy for you to say, maybe you can afford to do that, but, but that's personally, and I, you know, I can only afford it for a certain amount of time as well, but I'd rather not, unless we're safe. I, I, I think it's putting a lot of people like that into a, to rooms could be, could be dodgy, but the next few weeks will tell a lot too. You know, it's changing. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, it's a it's a very tough time for everybody. It is. You know, uh, the, I think there will be Christmas, but it'll be scaled down. You know. Yeah. Well, we hope so. We hope so. Yeah. Uh, in Australia, um, uh, Victoria, I think Melbourne has gone back into lockdown. That's right. And uh, is not so well. UK. So we just got to be careful, folks. Uh, spoke, to, spoke to a friend yesterday who said she's not going to go near a pub. At least until 2021, because she says there's no need, and you know, no, honestly, it's just saying, that, like, why, why would I, uh, why would I put myself at risk? So, uh, look, we, we're we're all in this together. That's the yeah. only, that's the only level of comfort I can take from this. Everybody exactly. is affected, and we've all got to weather it together and come out of it together. I also, you know, my mother calls it uh, the Third World War, and there has been a shot fired, and I subscribe to that. Like, it's it's the whole world is is affected. So if, you, if we take ourselves back 70 odd years to World War II, when countries were decimated, there were bombs raining down from the sky and, you know, businesses were shut and all, all the stuff. So it is, it has that feel about it, except there's no uh, obvious violence yeah. uh, uh, attached to it. Uh, so please God, we'll all come through it. Yeah. I, think, I think we all know we will. Yeah. Uh, 
just a matter of how and when. You will get a vaccine, and I think anyway, it will happen. So. I think so. Think so. Yeah. Okay, so let, let's just go there for a second. I'm gonna we're gonna to go to Q and A and our comment from the floor, if you don't mind, in just a moment. Yeah. Uh, but what are you? What would you like to see in your industry? Let's say 2021. What would you like to see it happen? Well, currently, I'd love to see. I know some people in the industry they've been cut from the 350 to to the 203. You know, for different reasons. I think it's difficult for people in entertainment and in the arts and that. I'd love to see that than a level playing field for everybody, everybody to get that. But going forward, I, I just love to see it getting back working. I'd love to see people's confidence growing. And, and not alone people, corporate, corporate um, um, organizations, their confidence growing. I mean, I'm, I'm currently quoting for, there's very little coming in, you know, in, in terms of quotes, you know, um, inquiries and very little quotes going out. But the ones that are going out, they're still very hazy. They're still, if we go ahead, if, if. I'd love to see some bit of normality and things settling down. And we're going to have a tough couple of years. There's no way these big companies are going to be straight back in there. I do a lot of work for Boston Scientific, great company in Galway. They're not going to come straight back in with massive crowds. Of, you know, they're going to watch it. People don't want to, to, to necessarily be there anyway, so it'll be slow, but it will come back. And I just love to see things happening slowly and then, you know, maybe expanding, presuming there's a vaccine, you know, and away we go. Yeah, yeah, please God, uh, it, it'll all come back in time. But I think you're right. I think that's a very prudent approach. It's not going to come straight back to you. Not no, no yeah. way. Um, what, what are you taking with you from COVID, James? Um, well, you know something, I, I've heard a lot of people saying it, and it's definitely true for me. The time we've had with the family has been great. I mean, I'm on the road a lot. You know, and it's an easy thing to say. People say that, oh, sure, it's great. But I genuinely mean it. I think I'm on the road a lot. Now, I'm not away as, as much as people think. People think I'm gone morning, noon, and night doing it. It's, I'm not. But I'm always doing something. But I'm never far away. You know what I mean? Unless they, they give us far away, I suppose. Then I am. <laughs> but, you know, I'm all, and we nearly always travel home. So there's always, I'm, I'm never a million miles away. But this time it's been great, you know, in the sense of I'm at home with the lads. We've good old fun. They're all still at home, you know. And, and they're all, I mean, they're 18, 17, 21, and 23. So they're not going to be at home for much longer, you know. And we, we've been very lucky. They're, they're, they're there and we're having good fun and enjoying the company and enjoying the old barbecues outside when the weather was good. So that's been super. So I think that is something we'll look back on. We'll never, ever get to spend that time, you know, with, with family. You'd never have thought that would have happened and that has happened. So that's been great. And the creative time I've had, yeah. And I'm, I'm, to be honest, I was a bit slow getting creative in it. I kind of enjoyed the, the time off for a while and enjoyed a few weeks and, and you know, it didn't do too much. And then I said, hold on, I gotta get moving here again. And I did. And as I said, I come over here, I do my thing during the day. I put in a day's work, you know, and I go home, you know, so. Nice one. And uh, tell me the, the little studio you have there, you know, there's a bit of pivoting going on by all accounts, as you say, you're not necessarily looking at others like TV stations or whatever to take on your work. You're asking, can you now, produce your own probably yeah. for, possibly for a web audience that's that's, that's it. Well, we have set up a very big virtual studio if you're on my facebook and you're on my my um higher website you look at virtual you'll see we've set up a massive studio up in county limerick with two friends of mine they own the equipment they own the space and i bring the the the, the events we have we've had a few there we've had maybe five or six there a lot of charity stuff which has worked well but it's a serious setup. We call it the virtual studio. We have two big studios, and Jerk Kenny and David Kenny, their brothers, they 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 set this up and run it. It is state of the art, and we're pitching, pitching, pitching it, but it's tricky. You know, it is tricky because um, people people are getting a little bit tired. Sorry for saying this now of the virtual stuff. You know, there are this is lovely actually, and I'll tell you why this is lovely. And I was watching it at the start, the way I had a few people at the start, Shelley and them. 
it's different. People are, are tired of looking at one person talking. You have it. And this is nice. You interviewed, you brought in a few people at the start, bit of fun, bit of mindfulness. That was lovely. And away you go and you have your people there and they're watching, they're lovely, positive people. This is nice. And, but this isn't the norm. Normally, it's, it can be very boring. And trying to, to get companies into our way of thinking, you know, we can do a conference for a company, but we'll top it and tail it with a bit of fun. A few spot cries, a bang, a couple of guest speakers, lunchtime, let's have an 80s half hour while you're making your sandwich at home. Come back after lunch, a couple of tall guest speakers, then into a mystery room. Nobody knows what's in this mystery room. Afterwards, another speaker, and then finally we finish off with a few spot prizes and guess the intro. And next thing they go, this is great crack. You know, this isn't our boring conference, but we're trying to get companies. Now we've one particular client at the moment who love that idea and they're looking at 12 conferences, but they're looking at 12 conferences, one a month for a year. So to just tell you the way some of the big corporates are thinking, they're thinking 12 months that they'll still be online. And that's a bit scary, but... but it, 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 it's it's both scary and there's opportunity within it as well. And you're yeah. amazing, you're skating to where the puck is going to be, as as uh, Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we wish you great success, continued success. Thank you. Hard working man, good guy with a good heart, great team around you. Well Thank done, Bulabos. Bulabos. Thank you very much, folks. Who'd like to come in on the chat here? Who'd like to come in and uh, add comment or ask a question? Don't be shy now. Br Bridget, please come on in. Hi, James. Good morning. Hi, Bridget. How are you? Well, I have to say, you're the busiest little, oh, the busiest folk, little bumblebee in Ireland, is all I can say. You're heading uh -huh. after every flower, and when the flower rejects you, you're off to the next oh, one. Oh, I'm gone. I'm gone, Bridget. You're after the honey. You're after the honey, I tell you. And no better man. I'm really impressed uh, with your determination. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm impressed with your house. Oh, oh it's lovely. It's lovely, yes. Is that a green screen in the background, or is it real? That's real, not to be able to do it. Yeah, it's real. Yeah, but, um, but no, honestly, James, you're, you're really inspirational because nothing, when, I, I just imagine you getting out that shower like, and the feeling of being singing in the shower. Yeah. And I have, I've had those, we all have had those experiences and you're so excited and, and you'd be cautiously excited, but then finally you'd say, well, feck it, it's coming through and then you get the call and yeah. then, or no call, and yeah. then you say, oh my God, like, you know I mean, and it's very hard to lift yourself up when all the work has gone through. You know what I mean? It is, and, yeah. But, but I really, you are definitely a very focused little bee and um, oh, well you. done you. It's a pleasure to hear your story. Ah, oh, that's lovely. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bridget. Brilliant. Bridget, Bridget thanks for that. I, I'm, I'm looking at your cottage now in a slightly different light. I'm looking at it through so James. I the dresser. He hasn't seen the dresser yet, you see. Oh, look at that. No, it's, 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 yeah. It's, 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 that's it's fantastic. That's beautiful. Yeah, and there's a, there's a fire with the Sacred Heart. I don't know whether you can hear it behind me or not. That is so nice. Yeah. I'm We'll all be up for a big party there, Bridget, when this Any is Any time you're in Jockey, James. Send us a date, time. and we're all going up. I'll bring the equipment. No problem. Any time. <laughs> you're more than welcome. It's an open house, half door and all. Welcome you. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. That's, that's where my head went. I was thinking uh, it's a classic set. It's a yeah. classic set, oh, ready-made set for some period drama. Lovely yeah. stuff, lovely stuff. Great stuff. Uh, Bridget, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thanks, Bridget. Right, Princess Shelley, in your own time. Hey, James. Hi, Great Shelley. stuff. How are you doing? Good, good. Um, some lovely comments here in the cafe, James. Um, really, really good. Sarah Ward, who has been here for, I think, all seven... Today's show 79. Yeah. Um, so I think she's been here for all of show seven, all of them so far. She kicked it off at thanking Eamon, first of all, for his mindful minute. And Eamon said thanks. And then she asked James if um, her husband, Sarah's husband, worked in De Beers back in the day. Jim Ward. Did you ever come across him? Jim Ward. I remember Jim Ward. I do. There was, there was, I remember Jim, he, if, uh, a slightly small fella. I think he worked in engineering. Am I right there? We'll, we'll see now. I remember Jim. Yeah, I think I remember Jim. I'm pretty sure that I, I know Jim. 
and she said then that it's when you said about your first event, you know, that the, the, the Belgian um, company that came in and it was a nice big budget. And she said, big budget, that must have been great fun. And then when you said about Cullum's 30th, she said, ha ha, he wishes maybe. She's getting cheeky, Cullum. She's getting cheeky. <laughs> so then Eamon also said, a wise woman, you were talking about luck and how lucky you'd been, you know. And um, Eamon said, a wise woman once told him, luck is preparation plus opportunity. And that's kind of what Cullum was saying. And that, that's for sure, you know. Um, James Finnegan, who's a regular in the cafe, I love this comment, James. Um, listen to this. He says, being a bespoke event creator must help keep everything fresh, but it is a challenge. James obviously has planning, personality, commitment, hard work, and yes, imagination and creativity. I love that you're continually making notes. Isn't that lovely, James? Okay. I'll hardly get my head out the store after all this. <laughs> Surely there's one there that's going to slave me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's not. I'm sure there's not. So then when you were talking about Oscars and Cullum's kind of little bucket list, if you like, to win one, um, James actually held up his Oscar and Sarah said, that's his Fred. And that's a referral to yesterday's show. Um, we had Noelle on and she had this, um, this mannequin that kept her company throughout COVID. So Sarah, J James was saying that that was your Fred. I think James has had to go. Um, so yeah, so Sarah Ward then said it's about survival. We were talking about the way the world is gone at the moment and Eamon was also saying about Melbourne and Victoria so um, I think there's a lot of agreement there with you James that we just need to be very mindful and we're like Kathy Mera new granny she's joining us in America she comes on at 5 58 a.m every morning James really give a wave Kathy there to James so he can see where you are happy, happy you. oh there's Kathy oh very good she comes us from the United States every day and she just said oh, very good. Time for the entire world thanks for sharing your optimism oh, so, thank you so you're inspiring from far away. Um, so then, then James Finnegan came back in and Kerry and he just said it's when you'd said it took a while to get the wheels moving, the cogs turn again for the creative stuff, you know. He said sometimes you just need to um, recharge the creative batteries, you know. Yes. Um, Donnach, who's joining us in Scotland. Um, Donnach, again, another previous guest on the show. Um, Donnach asked, how do you stay in the zone, i.e. stay yourself, James, when pitching your idea or business, knowing that you're Really need the business say how do you stay kind of focused i suppose is what dunnock's asking i just completely and utterly believe in what i create <clears throat> i won't I, I you know if i create something i really firmly believe this will work and the reason i do i've been in front of people for so long doing different things and i know what makes people tick I know if there's a hundred people at event, if there's a thousand people, if there's five thousand, I know what makes them tick. I know after all the years what they like. So anything I create for TV, it's not that I'm stubborn in this, but I firmly, I know it'll work. It may not work in TV world. It will definitely work in event world, but I'd be pretty sure it would. So I think when you're passionate and about what you create, it keeps you in the zone. You know, and I will obviously take on board. I pitch stuff and events on TV and immediately shut down all war work because of that. I actually straight away kind of think, mm, I disagree. And I've said in the meetings, I've said, mm, I might disagree with that. And I'll tell them why. So I just because they're the head of a TV company or the head of a big corporate, it doesn't necessarily mean they're correct. You know, so I and so I stay focused on what I created and and push, 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 you know. Thanks. Really good answer and great question, Donna. Thank you very, very yeah. much. Um, Eamon has popped in all the links, James, to your LinkedIn and to the website. Oh, thank you. So I always say to our guests, then if you want to highlight that, follow the link later on, learn more about the exciting and creative imaginative work that James does. Um, so highlight and copy and paste that and you can follow those links later on. Donald um, is delighted to be in the cafe as well. He just said he's so delighted to hear your story. And just before I hand back to, to Colm, you know, James, I can share your, my four kids are 23, 19, 16 and 12. And I'm so glad to hear somebody else. The biggest thing for me for COVID, I was so delighted they were all under my roof. You know, we yeah. have so much fun and I love that you you alluded to that and okay. as well uh, just to, and you didn't mention it during your interview you do being in Six Mile Bridge 10 minutes away from Shannon you do so so much for charity and even though you are as Bridget said um, you you are busy being and you're, you're constantly going from one thing to the next 
just also just to tip the hat and just say like you you do so much give so much time and energy and we always say here in the coffee at 11 show and why we're always so grateful that you're joining us that time is the one thing that can't be replaced yeah. and just to say well done well done on all the charity work that you want to make as well that you Thank find you. and you know something why do i have you there shelly i think you need a little mention here because no, I, I mean no I'm, 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 i think you do because I meet a lot of people, I, again, I've been so fortunate, the people I've met down through the years, so good and so creative and, and great friends of mine. But Shelly, I, I mean, I looked, I met Shelly a long time ago when she was doing her dance classes. And I mean, talk about a busy bee, you know, you know what I'm talking about. That's a girl, talk about busy and creative, you are. Stop. Uh, no, really, <laughs> and I'm not saying that now just because I'm here with you. I've always said that about you, and I think you know that. You have I a do. great, great brain, and you're fair play to you, you know, very creative. So, thank you, you very much. You have the right lady there. <laughs> I look so to her. <laughs> Hold on to me, do that now. <laughs> thank you very much, James. Thank you. Really. Yeah. And it really is a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank and I've seen lots of smiling, nodding, laughing, and you've been a wonderful guest. And I'm ah, delighted at this point to pass you back over to the host with the most. Um, it's Colin. Thank you, Colin. <laughs> Thanks, Shelley. Hey, lovely, Shell. That's, that's gorgeous. Yeah, James, thank you for that. Uh, I, see, I love that piece, of that part of the show. Bridget, did you want to come in with something? You had your hand up. Okay, I have a bone. You were looking for a bone to pick, right? I have a bone to pick with you. Go, go right. for it. The background you have there is absolutely brutal for I someone know. in entertainment <laughs> and razzmatazz and is trying to sell a product, right? I can show you. Would you, I would you can ever you. get that changed? Would you ever get it changed? Who gave you the advice on that? Well, I could show you backgrounds if I turned that camera. I'm going to do it. I'm going to show you. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch it. Can I see what I'm doing here now? Can you? I don't. Can yeah, I? We can. We can. My own screen. In there, in that office. Yes. There's half a Range Rover. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> see it? Can you make it out? Not really, but I believe you. <laughs> I've got a desk in that office, and it's actually it's half a Range Rover cut yes. in two. Well, it's a Range Rover. I don't. I don't care. But the Range Rover, I'm not using. It is. But you know something. I'm the type of person, I'd rather have a, a wall here behind me and go, if I'm in there sitting beside that, you're going to go, what is this head <laughs> doing? No, no, I, I think the Range Rover is better, I have to say, James, right? I'm doing that, the Rover. <laughs> that has to go, the brick looks like a prison cell, with, a, with an L3 propped up That's the very back. very funny. <laughs> yeah, I was on a call recently, and somebody else said that to me, James, sorry, that was the background. <laughs> I just have... I have so many bizarre backgrounds around this building and props. I, I had I had an Oscar there. I'm kind of sorry I took it away. Yes, yes. Especially with Colum's point. That's why I put it outside the door. We forgive, we forgive you. We forgive you. But next time I'll, I'll, I'll dress up in a shiny suit and I'll have Oscars and I'll be sitting in Range Rover. Yeah, and everything. good, good, good. Had, had to say it. Had to say it. Hello, hello. <laughs> Jay, Jay, welcome to the Coffee at 11 show. No idea what's going to come out. <laughs> but that was a pleasure. Uh, Bridget, thanks for that. That was great. That was lovely. Thank you. Good. All right. Uh, yeah, James, listen, it's lovely having yeah, had you come in to the, to the cafe today. And thanks for your comments earlier about the little format that we've created. This just happened by accident. Um, I found myself in lockdown, wondered what will I do? How would I get inspiration? Because I've got this regular blog, vlog podcast that would go out on a Sunday. And I thought, do you know what the best way, because I, I, because I'm not in the marketplace, I was going to lose, lose the inspiration that would give me a piece to write about. So yeah. I said, do you know what I'll do? I'll invite somebody in for a cup of coffee. We'll have a chat and invite a few people around to have an earwig. And it's turned into this uh, little piece of magic. That's just gorgeous. Yeah, it's just gorgeous. No, it's, and it's a lovely positive vibe from it, I have to say, you know. Except for Bridget's but, um, point. Except for Bridget's point. But. Yeah, of course, Bridget, <laughs> yeah. I prefer if Bridget was deleted from the next meeting. If you ever back here again, please. And I'm convinced that she's sitting behind the green screen. That's not really her house. I believe that that's fake. There you are. I've said it. Hello. It's out there. Come here. That's a pleasure. A joy, a joy. Okay, folks. Okay, this is great fun. Great fun. And uh, let me just tell you what's happening in the cafe over the next couple of days of May. So tomorrow, lovely lady coming in from Carlo. Her name is Dara Byrne. Uh, D, Dara D. Byrne. And uh, Dara is coming in because she has set up a thing called the Mammy Hub. And she's done so because of her own journey through motherhood and her own challenges with it. And she feels that there, there isn't enough opportunity for mammies to get together and talk about all things mother 
hood. Now, I have no idea how I'm going to facilitate this tomorrow, but with your help, it'll happen. So really looking forward to that. Dara was in yesterday. We did a quick tech check yesterday. So she's coming in tomorrow. So please make time, come in and honor her story. And do you know what, lads, we learned something about what's going on in the fairer sex and how they, uh, yeah, how they cope with uh, motherhood. Or, or otherwise, perhaps. So I'm looking forward to that chat tomorrow immensely. Uh, then next week is our last week for Series 1. Putting that out there, Series 1. There will be a Series 2, likely Fridays only, because uh, COVID is lifting officially next uh, on, on the 20th. So we said we'd keep this thing going till COVID lifted. So it's Friday the 17th. Next week, Monday is Roisin Meany, author, local author here. I'm sure you know Roisin James, uh, author of 17 novels now. Uh, Tuesday is my dad, Tommy O'Brien. He'd be 82 in oh. August, so he's coming in for posterity's sake. Um, Wednesday is the lovely Katrina O'Brien, who is our editor-in-chief. want to make sure that we capture uh, Katrina's story. She's absolutely our rock. Thursday, I've been talked into it, so Katrina's going to interview me on Thursday. Nice. Ask him what's the backstory. And then Friday, we had asked, James, if you've any pull here, we had asked Uthran the Heron, Michael D., would he come in on Friday? Haven't had a response yet, so we have to assume there's a plan B, and the plan B is Dr. Sinead Kane. She is Ireland's first blind solicitor, blind lawyer, uh, an adventurer par excellence who ran seven marathons in seven days on seven continents, and uh, she's just an amazing lady with an amazing backstory. So looking forward to that, and that, and that will finish series one. So I'm going to finish by saying thank you to the wonderful team. Princess Shelley, thank you for uh, producing today's show. Heart emoji, of course. Eamon Smith, a.k.a. The Monk for keeping us safe and secure in that lovely mindful moment at the start. Katrina O'Brien in advance for topping and tailing this later and making it beautiful for our ever-growing international audience. And of course, James Sexton, my special guest today. James Sexton, namaste. Can I say one thing, Colin? Would you mind if, would you pause there for 30 seconds? Could you chat amongst yourselves for 30 seconds? I just gotta do this, all the time, all the time. Oh, come here, we better unmute everybody. This is great crack. I think this, I have a feeling this has been inspired by Bridget. We'll, we'll have to say. This is Fred number Inspiration. two. Inspiration. Inspiration. Yeah. What you missed, yeah, it's the Oscar for you, Colin. Look out, you deserve that. And the Oscar goes to Colin O'Brien. Now you're talking. Now you're talking. Yeah. No no it's, it's, Colin, it's the image here. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> Put your pants on, Colin. Yeah! <laughs> I don't know how much of it you can see there. Oh, you can see it all. Yeah. Oh, maybe you can see too much. Oh! Let's move on from that. <laughs> James, between, between Bridget and Sarah now, we've got to keep going. We, we, we often have to bring guests back twice, second time to apologise. <laughs> oh, Bridget, I've never heard of Bridget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was delicious. She was delicious. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, pleasure, and really glad that you enjoyed it. Uh, you know, it was a late got into you, which is lovely to see. You know. Thank you.